Deformation occurs when you change the shape of an object by bending, stretching, or squeezing it. There are two types of deformation, elastic and plastic. In elastic deformation, the object returns to its original shape. In plastic deformation, the object's shape is changed permanently. Elastic deformation stores energy, while plastic deformation dissipates or removes energy. I can elastically deform this strip of metal by pressing on one end. Energy is now stored in the metal. If I let go, the energy is released and the metal bounces back to its original state. If I push hard enough though, the metal doesn't return to its original shape. It's been plastically deformed. One place where you would want to absorb a lot of energy is when protecting yourself from an impact. Lots of safety equipment uses plastic deformation to absorb energy in case of an accident. Let me show you how that works. I've taped an egg inside this cinder block. I'm going to drop the cinder block and I want to keep the egg intact. When I drop the block, it develops kinetic energy before hitting the ground. Once the block hits the ground, that energy is transferred to the egg and the egg breaks. If I drop the egg on an empty aluminum can, the can will crush, which will eat up a bunch of energy. Now a lot of the kinetic energy in the block got used up plastically deforming the can and the egg is just fine. One way to characterize a material's behavior is with a stress-strain curve like this. The horizontal axis is strain, which you can think of as deflection. The vertical axis is stress, which relates to the applied force. In the elastic region here, the deflection is said to be self-reversing and the material can return to its original shape. In this region, if I apply more force, I get more deflection. If you increase the deflection beyond the elastic region, the material typically starts deforming plastically. In plastic deformation, the deflection isn't self-reversing and the material does not return to its original shape. Another feature of plastic deformation is that you may not need to increase the force in order to get more deflection. You may be able to get additional deflection at the same or even reduced force. Elastic and plastic deformation both have their uses. In general, elastic deformation is desirable if the material is to be reused or if you need to otherwise recover the energy stored during deflection. A bow and arrow is an example of this. When you bend the bow, you're storing energy in an elastic deformation. That energy is transferred to the arrow when you release the bowstring. The bow then returns to its original shape and you can reuse the bow to fire another arrow. Plastic deformation can be desirable in some cases, mostly where you need to dissipate a bunch of energy and don't need to reuse the material. One common place you'll find it is in safety devices. Car bumpers and bicycle helmets, for example, are designed to crush on impact. However, after they've been crushed once, they've outlived their usefulness. That's why you're supposed to replace your helmet if you have an accident. The material has likely undergone plastic deformation even if it looks undamaged. Another example of the use for plastic deformation was in the legs of the Apollo moon lander. The lander had to be really lightweight but strong and it had to accommodate the possibility that the surface it was landing on would be uneven, hard, soft, or some combination of these. Fortunately, each lander would be used only once, so they used a crushable honeycomb material as a shock absorber inside each strut. The material was made of little hollow hexagons with very thin walls. The material crumples from the top down like our aluminum cans until it's entirely compressed. This is a cross section of the strut itself. It's got two concentric cylinders that slide across one another. The central region is filled with a crushable honeycomb material that eats up a lot of energy as the strut gets shorter. This design allowed them to dissipate a lot of energy and even better, the equations governing the design became simple. Usually, more deflection of a material requires additional force. However, one of the really cool things about this material is is that when it's being crushed, the force remains constant. This means it's easy to calculate the work done while crushing the material. Work is just force times distance, so the work done in crushing this material is a constant times the change in the length of the honeycomb material. The honeycomb material can be designed to crush at a desired force. The kinetic energy you need to absorb is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. If you know the lander's mass and you can estimate a maximum landing velocity, you know how much energy you need to dissipate. Work and energy are the same thing, so the kinetic energy you need to dissipate is the same as the work that you need to do in crushing the honeycomb material. Equating these two tells you how long the honeycomb material needs to be and your design is done. Most of the time, engineers rely on elastic deformation. 
Sometimes though, plastic deformation is useful. This isn't really one of those times.